We started as a living room church. We started back in the 70s. Many of us were part of the Jesus People Movement. I was involved in Campus Crusade for Christ. We were all asking the same question, and that was, if God sent his son to this earth to take on human flesh, is this all there is? You know, we were playing our guitars, we were singing our songs, strumming along, and we thought, isn't there more to worshiping God? We didn't know where we were going, and that's always fun when you're starting out on a journey. We didn't know we were on a journey. We knew that the church that we, as we understood it, you know, the kind of contemporary evangelical house church of the 1970s, you know, was a search for authenticity and, and uh, you know, to be uh, as much like the New Testament church as we could envision. Uh, but it didn't really work. Uh, either you can't go back in time and recreate the New Testament church, or else our idea of what the New Testament church was, was faulty. And so we began a search. We began a search that uh, led us over several years, I think it was close to 10 years, into the Eastern Orthodox Church. When we were chrismated in February of 1987, uh, we were ordained deacons one week, priests the next, and we were brought into this holy church. We, uh, we realized when we came into the archdiocese that... Uh, we wouldn't be able to ordain our own folks anymore. That'd have to be the bishop. So we said, let's just ordain everybody. And we came in with, I think, about 35, 40 deacons. Actually, we had four. And uh, those four deacons are still serving all these 30 years later. So apparently we made a good choice. <laughs> Many people might not know, but when we started the church in 1987, we were playing guitars in the Divine Liturgy. Almost all of us were, were converts. Uh, we came from evangelical free churches, Baptist churches. Very few had liturgical backgrounds. And as time went on, every, every passing year, we became even more thankful that we ended up where we did. Yeah, you know, we got a lot of new folks, a lot of young people. Uh, it's wonderful. The, we're known uh, as... Uh, having some sort of fertility uh, uh, blessing on our parish. We have a lot of families, a lot of young families, a lot of children. One of the most beautiful sights I think there are in the church is on a Sunday morning when maybe a parent or godparent holds a little child up to light a candle in the front of the church. They partake with the rest of the family of God. They're not excluded. We don't bring them in when they're 12 years old and say, well, now, here's the church. They grow up in the church, being known and knowing other people. And I think for a child, I think the Orthodox Church is just a fantastic place to raise your children. It's really interesting to be like the grandpa generation, seeing the kids and their kids uh, being raised in the Orthodox faith and loving it. I mean, there's, there's such an authenticity and sincerity in their participation. It's great. I love it. I always encourage visitors to return at least several times if they show any kind of interest. Because the first trip to an Orthodox church, if this is all you've ever, this is your first experience, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. There's too much to... Uh, uh, to see. Your eyes are just going all over the place. Liturgical churches are different. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, our, our method of worship is very, very ancient. And frankly, people that come to visit us from evangelical backgrounds are kind of searching for some history. They're searching for some roots. They see something they've never seen before. As Dostoevsky said, beauty will save the world. And that beauty is found in Eastern Orthodoxy. Why? Because heaven is showing itself on earth.